part two of our 2023 Mealy Mealy adventure. Fuel stop, first thing. So we get up in Chervio, uh, Martina Milano. Draw your attention to these amazing trees, these sort of sculpted trees. I don't know what they are, I'll have to find out. A friend of mine's a Boric, a Borealist, a, <laughs> a Boriculturalist, still though, what they are. So, it, yeah, it's lovely, it's lovely. Yeah, not too early to start. We're, we're um, seven o'clock here, so it wasn't too bad. But what I didn't explain yesterday was the actual enormity of the amount of driving. So we went over those start ramps at two o'clock and we got in at 12. Time we got to the hotel, 12.30, and then we had to go and get something to eat. Now we've been told, don't expect to get a lot of sleep and don't expect to get anything to eat because everything's been finished by the time you get in and get to the hotel or whatever. But actually that wasn't the case, they said, you know, Restaurants open to one, and there was there was plenty to eat. It was it was it was it was good. So that was that. And as I say, managed to do that. Have a little wander, let my food go down, little little, little, little walk on the beach, and went off to bed. And then it wasn't too early I start. But of course, what you got to think is that the other guys in the early cars, you know, they could be starting two hours earlier than us. And sometimes they're not getting in till after us because the cars are slow if they're old thirties things and stuff like that. Obviously not your Bugattis and Aframos, 1750s, that sort of stuff is obviously very quick and they're all right, but some of the more normal stuff can be quite slow and must take them a while to get anywhere. So we're just going off to find the start. So we're really just cruising at this point, just just moving around. But I thought it was quite nice get a bit of footage whilst we can before I'm in the in the in the sort of melee of of, um, of all the all the navigation and, and tulip maps and so on. So we're just capturing a bit. This is lovely that, that uh, Maserati, isn't it? And that's again, you know, as I said, one of my favourites. Queuing up for one of the time trials here. for a coffee. So this is actually San Marino and climbed up into the battlements and, and you can see this wonderful view so quite something you know this is quite stirring and this is the sort of stuff you get to see but you don't always get to stop for a coffee <laughs> that's the trouble so sometimes it's just zipping by and I haven't had time to capture it on the phone either to, to show you so you'll have to you'll have to just Take us red. Use your imaginations. This is the sort of stuff we're doing, and it's like this all the time. So, oh, quite, quite stirring, really, and uh, really, really enjoying this. So, out in the open country now, and you, you sort of forget how rural it can be, Italy, when you when you get out and about. Yeah, you can't even see a little farmstead or anything, can you, for, for miles. And these are fairly relaxed bits, which is why, I, why I've got time to film. You know, you, you've, got a, you've got a fair way between the next sort of tulip diagram, or, you know, we might have a, you know, as much as a few kilometres before we've got actually the next thing, the next point of reference that we have to be aware of. And normally what they do is they give you a point of reference 
and you, it was, it'll be like a sort of sign for, for you're entering the town or something like that. And then very soon after that, you've got the actual junction you're trying to see or trying to, trying to actually, you know, you've got to turn off at. So they're quite well done. So this is a town called Loreto, you'll see up on the hill in the distance. Um, it's not Monte Cassino, <laughs> that's further down country. It does look a bit like it though. The, the maps, they, they do, um, you know, you're not just suddenly, oh, here's the junction. They normally give you something in advance of that. So once you get in the hang of it and, and you're tripping your trip meters and you're you know, on top of it, it actually becomes quite good. It's quite, it's quite enjoyable, uh, particularly the map looks well written. So I found it. Fucking hell. Yeah, quite got into it really as we got going. So that'll be a critique of uh, his overtaking prowess, this chap. And this was a bit of road that you can see is, is you're not really supposed to be overtaking there. And then someone else, a chase car, has gone hammering by him. But then you can see, look, there's stuff coming the other way. So really don't want to start emulating that. For all its glory, there was a few, a few issues like that. And we were a little bit not sure about some of this. Now having another fuel stop. And there we go, we're taking the sights. Now this Ferrari was particularly nice. And there you saw our boot full of spares, <laughs> even another tire just in case we carried way too much stuff. But the joy of that was that it, it did enable us to um, have a bit of a bit of balance in the back of the car and hunker the back down a bit. So you see you know, these, these medieval towns are really worth something. Racanti, I think this was called this place. Stopped and we got we we we've just That's done our time, time and now we're off to go and have our lunch. Uh, with a police escort. <laughs> Make sure we get a seat at the table. And there's not just crumbs left. So I was having a look at this. This is now for 1900. It's obviously got a different different body on it. So um, I was sort of intrigued by this and you know looking at this dynamo to see how it's set up and how they've got a uh, different regulator to us. They've got the what is the proper regulator, which I think was a Bosch or a VDO. It's, yes, a Bosch. And ours has got a terrible Lucas thing that's like a sort of fake one, which I'm not very happy with. Um, more on that later. But you can see the heat shielding they've got on these wonderful um, uh, on this wonderful manifolding, this tubey manifold. We 
you're zeroing everything now. So there we are, getting back in the car after lunch. Well, I've zeroed everything. And there we are, leaving. So this all gets a little confused and just trying to work out where you are and, and the, you know the, it is on the it is on the diagram but you know don't know where you're parked and you've got to find your way through and then pick up on your tulip diagrams again but you're here there's a degree of confusion here love this little fiat 600 as you know i like them that's our diagrams that's what it looks like now another little cue some more time. So I'm encouraging him to put the old blues and twos on, which he did. Yeah, so, so a lot of the police guys are in the period vehicles and historic vehicles and they're dressed up in, in period gear. And it does beg the question, what if there was an actual robbery that needed to be attended to or something? Would they charge off in that and be dragging them, the criminals away in it? Put them in a period cell. Be a long sentence, wouldn't it? <laughs> From 1965 to 2023. So here we are, queued up. So yeah, th this was getting a bit frustrating sometimes, these queues, because they get a degree of heat sink into the engine. Now, it never failed to start, and we didn't have problems with boiling fuel, that type of thing, but we were worrying about the charging system. It did keep coming on, the light kept glowing. There we are, this is quite something. This is a wonderful Yatti. That's quite something. See all the lock wire on the sides, how they connect them all together like that. And it's got a bit of a fake nose, hasn't it? Something happened to it. it. Looks like it must have reversed into something. And you see, sort of, even the, the, the sort of chase vehicles are getting tied up in amongst us as well, which is a little bit frustrating. But they're stuck there as well. Little Topolino. This Maserati, as you know, I particularly like this. Now, this was one of our stops, um, Rienti, which was where we stopped for another time control. But it just gave me a good excuse to photograph these wonderful ladies and that, that rather you know, smashing Maserati. I've always fancied building up a tour wing copy or something like that. Maybe not. Well, I certainly get not be getting a real, real one, will I? But you, you can build things like this you know, with, with a bit of ingenuity, and, and a lot of stuff is really manufactured for it. I say a lot. Some of the important bits are really done for it. You can actually build a new engine, a replica engine. And we're in Rome. As if by magic. They say all roads lead to Rome, and it felt like we drove down every single one of them. I uh, was so fraught, I didn't have time to record anything, as you'll see. Or rather you won't see, because I didn't record anything. But we're here, we're at our time control in Rome. Now Rome's a bit of a highlight of the event, because obviously it's Brescia, Rome, Brescia. So you feel like you've really achieved something getting to Rome. And what should happen is there should be a sort of police motorcycle outrider tour of historic Rome for all the old cars. You remember that one from the Brescia Forum? And there's the, yeah, the Sportiva. So, you know, you do bump into things as you wake over. Well, actually, rephrase that. You try not to bump into things, but you meet up with people. We don't want him, don't want him bumping into the Sportiva or anything, do we? Ruining it. So yeah, you, you meet back up with people and you see these cars again, so it's, it's quite nice. And particularly if it's nice cars. I mean, some things you could, you know, be too worried about, but yeah, seeing the Sportiva again, that is something, in it? So this is in this park in Rome. We just, we've, we, we've put, handed our time card in and we're waiting to do our little tour, which is sort of, yeah, yeah um, I tell a lie, we're not doing the tour yet. We're, we're, going to, we're going across the finish ramp, aren't we? 
so we're going to go and there see that. So we was yeah, there was a lot of people milling around in that park, but now we're actually going through here. And if you're a drinker, this is the place to be, isn't it? If you can afford it. So yeah, this is Harry's Bar. Now, obviously, the Harry's Bar in Venice is rather famous. But, um, I don't want to pay 20 euros for a Coca-Cola, so it's no use to me. But there would have been a time. I have been I have been to the one in Venice on a couple of occasions, but yeah, it's not really. Anyway, not really for me. I'm sure it is for the guys in the Gullwing. Probably got a bar tab there, haven't they? And this is the sort of usual thing, you know, we, we're just queuing up to go over the ramps and these people still have to push in front. <laughs> I don't know why they seem to think they have to be in front of us. I suppose it is a race. But yeah, I sort of, sort of um, yeah, I, I, I think that's got a bit more to do with uh, not the racing attitude, more to do with the uh, just their own personal attitude. They don't like have to queue for anything, they want to be at the front. Yeah, you hear our brakes are squeaking a bit. We did have a little bit of brake trouble. They started pulling um, to the left quite severely. So that did entail a little service stop, but at the hotel later on. So we sort of mixed it with some quite salubrious guests. Well, you've got to clap, we've got to clap. Look a little bit half-hearted, but, you know, they still did clap. So we're all queuing up to go on this little tour, which is, you know, Palpable excitement, you know, this is going to be a highlight. I think you can tell from my um, delivery, was going to be. It didn't quite work out like that. So, yeah, the basis along the short of it is we, we, we set off and, you know, within a couple of junctions, we'd just been cut up by all the taxis and the buses and, and just lost our police escort and then we had no idea where we were going so we followed this car for a bit but they were obviously lost as well so we, so we started to work out that they weren't even on the tour anymore so that was that was a, a disappointment to say the least um, so and we were really tired we were really tired by this stage so It's 10.30 now, and we've been going since 8 o'clock. 
so yeah, it, it, quite taxing, quite tired. You, you see what I mean? People just pulling out, things happening. There is there is a, a light up ahead there, so you know we've got a hope of trying to follow someone, but yeah, that soon disappeared and we, that was it. So with that, we decided let's let's just cruise back to the hotel, which was which was a little way out actually. So with that in mind, you, you don't really want to be messing around for hours on end in, in Rome trying to do our own little tour so we, 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 we ducked out you know that's a city break thing isn't it for another time perhaps but yeah that was um, I'll admit that was a great disappointment I thought that was going to be a real highlight and I've heard people talk about it but yeah it didn't happen I think one of the problems was we you know just we didn't get organised enough and, and, and ask enough questions we should have you know perhaps gone and asked some marshals or something about it or, or looked at it, I don't know. Anyway, stop wobbling on, it, it doesn't matter. But here's Gina, <laughs> so we got to say goodnight to Gina. Yeah, I thought that was quite cool. Got a bit of a soft spot, as you can see. And this actually isn't isn't my post. This belongs to my cousin, and I I, I slightly um, covered that. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. The colours, the wayward wife. Adult only sex bomb. <laughs> it's quite something, isn't it? It's probably very tame by today's standards, but yeah, lovely. Right, here you go. This is their Ferrari getting serviced. And you can see the sort of enormity of what goes on with people, you know, these service crews all set up at night doing this. And there I was messing around with our brakes. But I got them sorted, got them sorted. And off we go again. Radi Kofani, this is which is another beautiful historic centre and off out again into the open countryside again you know there were times when we sort of slipped into these sort of almost a cruising speed which was lovely and you know travelling with these yeah, beautiful old things so it's quite good and we sort of we've you know we're in, we're in a little convoy almost and so these aren't too stressful these points you know we've, we've slowed down we calmed down we're not in the not in the sort of uh, fray at this point and we're just cruising our way in and so we're climbing up the hills we've got a few switchbacks to go through I mean this is quite an honor to drive through streets like this in an old car now I've been advised that this is a bit of a clutch killer this hill. You know, I think I think sometimes you get in a bit of a queue going up here. And it all backs up a bit and, and that's when you, you know, struggle because you have hot engine and hot clutch and riding the clutch to get up here. But yeah, we, as you can see we were flying nicely so we obviously hit this at a good time. There's a degree of anticipation as we climb this hill, isn't there? Now those in the know might know where this is. They like the melee. It's lovely in it hanging around in a restaurant and being able to watch this go by. You know, I think you could get a lot out of this trip by, by just you know going to watch it, not actually driving it. Maybe touring around and meeting up places, but yeah. I think it'd be great just to spectate.
So where Rome disappointed, Siena certainly made up for. What about that? I've wondered about this for years. I've seen photos of the, the cars coming into here and thought, wow. To begin with, it was, wow, where's that? I said to a friend of mine, is that that's Siena where they do the patio? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Never dreamt I'd be driving in there in an old car. Never dreamt I'd be part of the Mini Media. So it was a, an honor. And yeah, I know I'm lucky for this one. an SS, 1900 SS, another 1900, I can't remember which coach builder did that, but you see it's a popular choice on this rally, so it's a good, good cars. Well, it's one of them little Maseratis we just passed. Did I mention I quite like them? I suspect you're probably bored of hearing me go on about them. Now I did talk to camera at one point, but the words failed me, and they do now. Just amazing, isn't it? That's a cute little thing, isn't it? Now that was at the hotel where we were staying before the event. A tiny, tiny little Seattle thing. Probably based on a Fiat Topolino, possibly a Minicento. Don't know, but it was a miniature thing. Very cute. And I liked it a bit of a squeeze, didn't it? Then there's a Minicento. Look, they're there, keeping an eye on me, still. It's cool, isn't it? It's this chap from Japan that I was saying about. Now, I did get him to uh, look at my YouTube site, um, and he took a photo of it, but you know, I don't know if he's subscribed yet, but he really should do. What do you think? I think he should. <sighs> oh, no. So this is where we had our lunch down here, yeah, this sort of covered market bit. You see just there to the right? I was too busy photographing this to photograph the food. But take a look on here, it looks very, very good. Must admit, a bit overwhelmed, don't really know what else to say. <laughs> there we are. Check it out.
favourite cars at the rally. That's a cute little thing, isn't it? Now that was at the hotel where we were staying before the event. A tiny, tiny little Seat thing. Probably based on a Fiat Topolino, possibly a Minocento. Don't know, but it was a miniature thing. Very cute. Look, they're there, keeping an eye on me, still. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, so they aren't really old, as old as the event by any means, but they, they're still cool. They travel with us quite a bit, these guys. You, you, you might have clocked them earlier on in the video. Maria, thing for Maria Callis. Hmm. Just a bit of street photography. Look at that herringbone! Isn't that beautiful? That herringbone pattern on the on the. What is that? It's quite something in there. The architecture. You see it on the films, thing. I think it's in a James Bond film, isn't it? Things like that, but yeah, it's sort of, yeah. So he thinks it's important, he's got someone holding a body for him. He probably is important, but anyway. I like this, this is quite cool. It's this, um, it did dastardly, this one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Jaguar engine. I imagine it's a 3.8, but he pro probably should have been like something a bit smaller in the period. But I expect he's got a cooking 3.8 in it now. Yeah, I was quite taken with that actually. And you see a reflection of our car in it. Good plate, because that's what it is, an HWM. This was another one apparently that was um, sold by Fiskins. So I mentioned that about the Maserati, didn't I, yesterday? or rather last week. And we're off again. Fed and watered. I must admit, there was no problem getting enough to eat or enough to drink. Well, you know, I mean, it was soft. You know, there, there was alcohol for those that did, but it was not, not much use to me and not much use to um, my driver. So we, we didn't partake, but there was plenty. You know, it was good. They're very chic Italians, aren't they? But you, you have to have your wits about it because people are just sort of wandering around. Like you see them just wandering about, and you're a little bit worried that we're going to. Um, Sort of kebab them on our, on our uh, bonnet mascot there. Really should have a champagne game called wedged on the front of that, shouldn't it? Because that is a lethal thing, that. And I did keep thinking that as we're driving around, you know, through these historic centres, thinking, you know, this, this is gonna, this is gonna come a crop of someone on that, isn't it? So you kebab them.
So we've got, we've got an outrider looking after us. And what's that we're following? Looks really rather wonderful. That'll be our Sportiva, won't it? I've been to the Alfa Romeo Museum and, and looked at that car there. And yeah, the idea of actually being out driving with it in an Alfa Romeo 1900, because of course that is based on an Alfa Romeo 1900. So that is, is quite something in it. I mean, this is, this is where it gets special, things like this. Things that you just wouldn't dream of happening. I mean, you, you know, you, quite something to see at a show, wouldn't it? You know, see it down at something like the Gould Revival or somewhere like that, or Festival of Speed. But to actually be just driving around with it, you know, I, you know, I think that's quite something. Yeah, it's a bit of a favourite of mine, that. You know, even more so now I've been around it like this. So this is about five o'clock now, a place called Lampicino. Well, <laughs> that's how I say it, I don't know how you pronounce it really. <laughs> but yeah, I must admit, it's called Mark's Italian Garage, but my Italian is, is absolutely diabolical, so I really should swat up on it. <laughs> yeah, or at least, at least, uh, yeah, pretty, yeah, sort of done something before I've start saying it on, on camera but there you go such is if you want to see this you'll have to put up with my slightly wonky um, voicing over terrible pronunciation but as I say I'm not here for my translating skills I'm here for my mechanical skills <laughs> and I said before I wasn't going to be here for my navigation skills but actually I got into it, did quite well. We, we only lost ourselves uh, on two occasions, missed a turning, and we found ourselves back within minutes where we needed to be. Whereas I've heard of people being lost for hours when they've when they, you know, gone a cropper on it. So I don't think that's bad at all. I was quite proud of myself for that, which is something I never thought I'd say. But there you go. This is stirring stuff in it, climbing up here. And I say we got our policeman, you know, you know, making sure we're all safe, which is an important thing, I think. So he assisted us the whole way over this lot, which I thought was very good. But it actually was quite difficult to overtake at times, you know, and he, he, we did need his help to try and get them over to one side a bit, which, as you can see, you know, this is this is a very important car. And look, it's sort of swinging out, potentially into the incom oncoming traffic. And that's a little bit worrying, I think. It was extremely well driven, I must admit. I did see some behavior that was not becoming at all but not these guys these guys are quite good but you can see look we're on a bend here and, you know that's a little bit yeah no, I was a little bit worried about it yeah I'm not so sure something so important historically important should be out and about like that but the other side of that is that I would never have got to see it if they looked it away in the museum nor would anyone else so what's the point you know bit like having a Stradivarius and never being able to hear it play, isn't it? What's the point? No reason for it to exist. So yeah, I think they should get out and use it. But yeah, you see what I mean? <laughs> it's a, don't really want a new no stuck into the sport team, do we? Ah, oh, the glories of this thing though. The scenery. Little fuel stop. Now we're climbing up in the mountains. Now this was a nice bit, I enjoyed this. So, so we got behind these ladies in, in this wonderful Maserati, which you already heard me talk about. So we followed this for what seemed hours, all for up through the mountains and down the other side. And we were in a little convoy and it was traveling at a nice pace, it wasn't slow. Uh, it, we were sort of, well, we looked slow here, but yeah, that's because I had time to film, obviously 
we, yeah, it would, it would pick up the pace a bit, get past some of the traffic, and, and we were on our own, you know, enjoying it. It was good, it was good. And there you go, look at this. Another little favourite of mine. Little multiplier. Look at that. Look at that darling. <laughs> I think they, they come, and, come and support the event every year with that. There's a lot of photos of that on, on the internet. But there we are. See, so yeah, this is stirring stuff. But yeah, people get a little excited in the tunnels sometimes, and you know you're not really supposed to be overtaking them here, are we? So, um, you see, so we've got traffic coming the other way. But it doesn't seem to stop these clowns, does it? And that was a support car. It's got nothing to do with the actual race as such. Is it? It's just, they just want to have a bit of fun driving through there. But, you know, if something goes a cropper with that, it's not going to be fun, is it? So another support car. Yeah, so why do they need to be the other end of this tunnel before us? I don't really get that. Then that, as said, nothing to do with the rally at all. Just someone having a bit of fun, isn't it? But, you know, anyway, I shouldn't be so po-faced about things, but you get a little bit jaded by some people's behaviour. And I know it's not just a procession. We're supposed to open it up a bit and have some fun, but, yeah. It's not fun when people get hurt. So it's got to about 8.30 now in the evening or, you know, and so that's, um, that's 12 hours of this now. You're getting a little tired, I must admit, you're feeling it now. And these bits would get taxing, these, these sort of traffic jams and sort of milling around and trying to push into between stuff and get above and in front of the traffic, which is sort of what we're doing. You see, we've got, we've got, we've got, the, we've got our um, motorcycle policeman trying to, trying to get us through and he really is there trying to show the other traffic that, that you know, we're the media media and let these guys go through. But of course, sometimes people don't want to do that. They're like, you know, who are these clowns in these old cars and why should they be in front of us? So this is coming into Modena. So they really should be into the old cars. See, red lights don't matter. <laughs> Straight through. But you can see we have got, we have got um, marshals there helping us and police and so on. So yeah, it, it is organised chaos. <laughs> but at least it's organised. <laughs> it's the bits where they're not there to support you that worries me. But yeah, you can see that everyone's, everyone's tearing down the road, aren't they? Trying to get ahead, trying to get through it all. And this is where it all gets a bit fraught because you do worry about, you know, you know what just the normal pedestrians are thinking and, 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 and just the regular commuters trying to get home. It's like, you know, what's all this? But it's modern now. So really, it is the motor city, isn't it? There's our Maserati again. So this was like a massive traffic jam, just trying to get to the to the just just hand our time cards in. This is this is a bit of a bore, actually. This was, but it did give me the opportunity to have a little wander around and show you what it's like. The world's best traffic jam. Oh, this is quite something, isn't it? Yes. I think even I could put up with this on the M25 if this is what the traffic jams are like. Look at that. 
Now you know what that is now, don't you? 1954, Alfa Romeo, 1900 Sportiva. That's a red car. You know what that is. his badges. Didn't mean he got there any quicker than us, did it? <laughs> so this is another 1900 base car. As I say, they're very popular on this event. I mean, they're bulletproof things really, aren't they? Quite funny doing their party piece over their gold wings, isn't it? Oh, look, there we are. Well, we've been parked there a while, so when I say he didn't mean he got in front of us, he's in front of us now in that Porsche. Fiat 130 Saloon. I said it did the trip, didn't I? Went all the way round. But yeah, we've been sat there a while, so he come in behind us. Don't do it, these ladies, you know, just nonchalantly left that there. <laughs> Yes, I think something like that could be in my future. Well, I hope, you know. And I particularly like the Fuhr built coupe, which they sort of built on the chassis of these, because they took these and built other bodies and put other things on them, or even the Fuhr Spider. It's, you know, quite something. But yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Can but dream. See the tow hitch, he must do a fair bit of competition work on that car. Mind you, that's quite an old tow hitch, thinking about it. That, they, I don't think you use them, you use the cloth ones now, don't you? But that only proves the fact it used to do stuff. So this is it, it's a bit later on in the evening as you can see. We're coming into Parma, it's 11 o'clock at night. So there you go, that was a fair old innings wasn't it? That was a long day, but to be in beautiful Parma. And of course the anecdote is that last year I actually went to Parma to view the Mealy Media because we were, we were very, it's very nearby to Verano. And when we realised that, the, that we were having to pack up earlier at uh, Verano on our Arbath track day because the Mealy Media tribute was coming through, which is where they drive all them Ferraris, modern ones and so on. Which is yeah, not my sort of thing, but you know, there you go. But yeah, because we, we, you know, we realised, oh, well, the actual, the really, the Mealy Melia proper is in Parma. So that's what we did. We went across to Parma and, and watched it come in. And, and that was it. And whilst I was doing that, Sheridan, who's, who's the owner of this, this car and the driver, he was over in, in Italy. And that's when he'd got the invite and told, if you buy the right car, we'll get you into the Mealy Melia. So I came home and he comes and down the workshop and we compare notes about our little recent forays into Italy and said, oh, you will fancy doing the Mealy Media with me? So I said, yes. 
So there you go. A year later, I'm there. We're there. We're actually in Parma on the event. I mean, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Our life, you know, some things just come and happen. Like dreams come true, I don't know. Not that it's even a dream of mine. I never thought it'd ever happen. I'd be doing this. I never thought I'd be preparing a car for it, let alone actually get to go and drive it. So I said Rome disappointed. Siena didn't. And Palmer, well, Palmer really pulled out all the stops. It was, it was quite something as you're about to see. And they love it. They're really excited, really enjoying it there. The crowds are really getting into it. Now the brakes were performing perfectly, just as well really, when you've got things like this manoeuvring in and out of the road in front of you. But yeah, having, having adjusted them, it got them back into balance and they, they work perfectly the rest of the time. They, they, well, that was um, yeah, just a little tweak. I adjusted them, I deglazed them because I had a bit of emery with me. But you know, that was the only actual servicing of the car I did. It did use oil, but that's to be expected. So we, we used about a litre a day, but you know, quite hard driving. Of course, I knew this because I'd been there the year before. But the year before, well, they all parked up in a park, which was which was just just outside of this, just across the bridge, uh, across across the sort of slightly dried up riverbed. And although it was quite glorious in this park to walk around and look at the cars, and everyone was sort of eating under a sort of tent thing, you know, this was quite stunning to park up here. And when I suddenly realised, God, we're parking there. You know, I walked through this last year. So that was something. But sadly, that red car has to drop out tomorrow. That's quite a nasty business, really. So that was something. Look, you see what I mean? What a wonderful place to go. So we sauntered off into the palace to have our tea, or supper, as I say. It was about half past eleven by this point. But it was, you know, what a beautiful place to stop and eat. And we, you know, they were, they were hand carving this palm ham for you. And, and they, yeah, it was, um, I say hand carving, I'm not really doing justice because they're kind of really thin, but they do. But uh, it wasn't like the stuff you get in the soup. Never tasted anything like it. It was this. The, it was exceptional. It was the best meal of the whole event. And yeah, I know you were there for the cars, but I was there for the food as well. <laughs> so, it was great. It really was. Yeah, that was a good meal. And that was it. Back to the car. Turn the back to the car. Drive back to the hotel. So. So good night. Because I'm really tired by this point. But it was a nice time. We felt that was real success. So there we are.